Um, ma'am? Unfortunately, you... You can't come. Come on. Come on. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. You want to come with me? I know you do. You can't. Out looking for a campsite for tonight. I'm on some BLM land and I'm just outside of Capitol Reef National Park hoping for some free camping tonight. It is Saturday so my chances of getting like a primo spot are just not there. Just kind of been driving around a little bit and I think I settled on the best spot that I can get in this area tonight. I've realized that I've never really explained what it means to be camping on BLM land. Like what is BLM land? We refer to this land by the name of the agency that's responsible for managing it. It's the Bureau of Land Management. And basically this is federal land. It is leftover land um, that came to the possession of the US government through westward expansion, so colonialization and treaties with foreign nations. Through that, it was owned by the US government. At the time, the government was selling plots of lands to individual people. It was then legislation came into play where it was decided that the US government would no longer sell pieces of its land unless it was for the benefit of the nation. So that's how the government ended up owning these vast swaths of land that are BLM land. It's not national park, it's not national forest. It is managed differently with different intentions. So that's why camping here is more accessible, um, especially more accessible than national parks, which are highly coveted and highly protected places and wilderness places. Um, a lot of the BLM land does not have wilderness designation and so it is treated differently. Um, it's a little bit more closely aligned with national forests but even national forests have more protective rights than BLM. BLM hosts a number of different recreational activities that are not permitted on national forest or national park lands and camping is 
much more loosely managed on BLM land. However, it doesn't mean it's like a complete free for, for all. We still need to be good stewards of the land as citizens. And so we want to be using designated roads where we are required to do that and then camping in um, pre-established campsites. A lot of the camping that you would do on BLM land is camping that is actually primitive camping. So there are no toilet facilities, there is no running potable water, and um, it's not closely managed with like campsite locations. There are some campsites, campgrounds on some BLM land, but for the most part, it is very primitive. And so you're basically looking at pulling off a road to a campsite that has kind of come about because people in the past have used it multiple times, such as this campsite that I'm in right now. Um, you can clearly see that it's had quite a bit of traffic. There is already an established fire ring here and it shows signs of previous use, which is why I know it's an acceptable place for me to camp tonight. Later on in this video, I'm going to show you how I go about finding BLM land um, and some of the tools that you use on the road in order to kind of figure out where some of my boondock campsites might be. Now let's take a look at how I found this and many of my other BLM campsites. So I first want to mention that I search out potential areas of interest when I'm in an area with cell signal. This doesn't mean that I always have the exact site locked in, but I have several ideas to work with. Is download the Google map of the area that I'll be traveling in so that my navigation will still work for me without reception. 
I don't rely exclusively on Google Maps in order to find campsites, because unlike areas such as national forests or national parks, BLM lands are not demarcated on Google Maps. National forests and parks are shown in green, but there's no delineation between private property and BLM land. So I use an app called Free Roam, which has an overlay layer that enables me to hone in on areas that are BLM. Then I'll look through the satellite images to locate roadways and other open areas that look like they might be a campsite. Many times I can even see fire rings already apparent or large parking areas. I can get a decent idea of road conditions, like if it's super rutted or steep, or how many sites might be available, how far they are from the road, etc. Because I want this information still available to me offline, I'll copy the coordinates from Free Roam and paste that information into my Google Maps and then save that information. Now, when I'm out of self-service and I'm ready to start looking for my campsite options, I can use that downloaded Google Map for turn-by-turn -turn navigation to those sites.